Abuse has got to be pretty great for you to be willing to be homeless, pregnant, with your kid. I lived in my car and I lived in an abandoned building. But I was very, very antsy as a child and uh, today they call it ADHD. Have you ever seen <laughs> frogs boil in water? I haven't, but I've heard of this where they don't even know that they're being boiled so they just stay in the pot until they're dead. Abusive relationships are like that. Have you ever experienced like a relationship where somebody just constantly tells you you're worthless until you finally believe it? There's tons of gaslighting or you're, you feel like you're a doormat, you're bending over backwards and bending yourself into a pretzel and no matter what you do, it's never enough. We're all doing the best that we can with the tools that we have. And I definitely was doing the best that I could with the tools that I had. Hey everybody, I'm Kimberly Liu, Comprehensive Wellness Specialist, and I'm founder of Guiding With Care and another company called Guiding Hands Healthcare. And most importantly, I am a single mom. I feel like growing up, uh, there was a lot of challenges. Um, I had ADHD, I had a lot of trauma, uh, maybe a little dyslexia in my experience, and so I always felt different than society. Um, I felt like I didn't belong and you know, relationships can be very challenging. Um, I had a lot of trauma growing up and I feel like I brought that trauma, I created a belief system and my belief system was I'm not lovable and the world is punishing. And then for me, everywhere I went, I've created that story. So in my relationships, I often would find you know, uh, relationships that were very abusive. Your outer world reflects who you are inside. So meaning if I'm having one abusive relationship after another abusive relationship after another abusive relationship, if I point at them, how many fingers are pointing back at me? So that said, I had to realize that I was the common denominator in every single relationship. I remember being in a relationship with my daughter's father and, um, it was very painful, it was very painful to talk about because I feel like there's only so much gaslighting that one can take and the lies and the cheating and all of that. And then there just comes a point in time where you just can't take it anymore. And I remember being pregnant with my daughter and asking myself, is, is this the life I want for her? Do I want her to grow up and see and learn from me and learn that abuse is okay? So I finally, it was just that one final straw, that one last lie that I just couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. And I walked out and I had to risk being homeless in order to, you know, to get out of that abusive relationship. Honestly, I don't blame him. I have this great, beautiful gift as a result of the experience that I went through. And I have to say, I don't think I would be as successful as I am today and have as much passion for helping women and anybody for that matter, um, if I hadn't have gone through what I've gone through. I lived in my car and I lived in abandoned buildings. And I gotta tell you, the abuse has gotta be pretty great for you to be willing to be homeless, pregnant with your kid. And I just knew that she couldn't go through that anymore. Um, I didn't want her to grow up in that environment. And so I, I um, rolled up my sleeves and I just figured it out. And I lived in abandoned buildings. I'm talking about like nails, in the floorboard coming out and I'm like sleeping on the hard floor and there's no like drywall on the walls. All you're seeing is pipes and, um, and sleeping on the hard floor at five months pregnant was pretty frightening. I was at the lowest of the low, but people treated me so awful when I was homeless. This is where sometimes the anger comes in and this is why I'm so passionate about what I do is as a single mom, I was judged by other moms but somehow I managed and every day I would just pray. I'd be like, God, please show me, what do you want me to do? But I had my faith. I knew deep down that something was gonna change. And so I remember, you know, starting to go to school and I remember the first class, I didn't feel like I could ever, <laughs> I didn't feel like I could ever finish it, but I did and I got a C in it, but at least I passed the class. And then eventually I just started to like, do little things. I would, I would um, be a personal trainer and I actually clipped my daughter to me in an ergo. <laughs> and I would uh, train my clients with my daughter attached to me and we would use my daughter as the weight and she would be like, ha ha ha, 
God, she was having so much fun all the time. And my clients loved it. And then it got to the point to where she couldn't quite come with me everywhere anymore because she was too busy running around. So I had to put her in daycare. And I feel like that was the most challenging thing in the world for me was to put my kid in daycare because, um, because I didn't want to be away from her. And I just felt like such a bad mom. But looking back hindsight, I feel like that was the best thing for her too because she gained all these social skills in school. Um, you know, social skills that I, I didn't know how to teach her. Um, again, I feel like I was raised by a pack of wolves, but, um, but again, I feel like life happens for you, not to you. Well, luckily I've changed my belief system. It took a while and it took a lot of work. I remember the belief was I'm not lovable and the world is punishing. So my outer world reflected my beliefs. So I remember in second grade, a little boy punched me in the nose and broke my nose. Uh, I also remember being chased home every single day from school. And if I ran home fast enough that day, I didn't get beat up. So my outer world reflected uh, my inner world. People always say, well, Kim, you know, it's not my fault. And I say, I completely understand it's not your fault. It wasn't my fault that I was abused, or maybe it wasn't my fault that I was being chased home every single day, but it's my responsibility to do something about it now. You know, if I just sit there and tell that story over and over and over again, nothing's gonna change. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, expecting different results. That said, if I don't change, nothing's gonna change. I dated my mother over and over and over and over again. I didn't know what covert narcissist meant. Covert narcissist. Um, my God, every single person I dated and the person I married was a covert narcissist. And one, one day I had to like look inside and say, okay, I'm dating a different face, different name, same person, over and over and over again. What's my part in this? And the thing is, is I'm not about blaming yourself. And people have blamed and shamed and all of that for, for a long time, including myself. I'm done with that. Now my question is not, I shoulda, woulda, coulda, or look what they did to me. The question is, what's my opportunity for growth? How must I change in order to change my outer world? Because remember, your outer world is reflecting your inner world. So if I want the outer world to change, I can't change them. What's the serenity prayer? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, all of you, the courage to change the things I can, me, and the wisdom to know the difference. So the question isn't, uh, you know, why are they doing this to me? The question is, what's my opportunity for growth and how must I change in order to create a different world? Being a parent, you can sit there and judge on the sign lines all you want to when you don't have kids, but when you have a kid, it's a completely different story, I'm telling you right now. And I don't know many people have had the level of trauma or abuse that I've had and lived to tell about it, but I feel like as a parent, you kind of appreciate that they at least kept me alive, <laughs> you know? And I remember one time telling my mom, and this may sound a little harsh, and she said, you're such a good mom. What do you do? How are you such a good mom? And I said, mom, no offense, I love you, but I just do everything opposite of what you did for me. And she was like, I can see that. Like we, she was able to see that, even though um, there wasn't many times where she ever admitted she was wrong. Again, I don't feel like, you know, my mom was, severely abused as a child and as a result she became a, a narcissist and a lot of other um, personality disorders so she was very very difficult very hard to get close to she wouldn't let me get close to her but yet she was suffocating at the, at the same time i don't know if anybody has ever experienced that Whew. so was, my mom was very heavy but that said she she you know would have given me the shirt off her back um, she loved me in the way that she could. And now being a mom myself, I see that my daughter is, has very different beliefs than I do. And it's, it's very challenging because I want her to do it this way, but she's teaching me how to back up and let her do it her way. And when, when I do, and it doesn't mean that she doesn't have boundaries or restrictions or anything like that, but as a mom, I've got to follow her lead so that we both feel free. But it's the hardest thing in the world to let your daughter be herself. <laughs> it's the hardest thing in the world. And I think, you know, 
when I let her be herself, we get along really well. But when I try to fit her into a mold that she doesn't belong into, uh, it's, it's really rocky for both of us. Oh my gosh, she's so sassy right now. <laughs> but I love every bit of her. I love every little bit of sass. I think they always say she's kind of like a mini me. I'm the last of nine kids. So and I have a very loud, huge Italian family. So anybody who's Italian will understand exactly what I'm talking about. But it was very loud and very, very, a lot of big personalities. I'm kind of an introvert. Now I'm very energetic, but I'm also introverted. I was very, very antsy as a child. And uh, today they call it ADHD. I have so much energy I don't know what to do with. And it's so funny because I, ha I own several companies. So I remember as a kid, I would go to the nasty golf course water and swim in it and go like pick up the golf balls with my feet and put them in a bag and then I would wash the golf balls and then sell them back to the golfers. I was always a natural born entrepreneur. I find like when people ever ask me, I don't know what I want to do for a living. I just, I'm just feel really stuck. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll say, what did you love to do as a kid? What would come naturally to you as a child? And you know, maybe that's what you're supposed to be doing now. So I was always a natural born entrepreneur. Nobody had to teach it to me.